Um, okay, so I think where we were up to, uh, so in terms of announcements, um, uh, I just put today's level. Um, the uh, so submissions for assignment two are due are going to be due this week, this Sunday night midnight as usual. Um, Reza will put up submission instructions uh, later today, I believe. Um, but it'll be in the same way as you did before. One thing to remember is you do have to submit all of your JavaScripts. Um, I think some people didn't submit some all of their scripts in the last assignment, and we had to check chase people up. Um, so do make sure you submit everything. Um, all of, well, not everything, just all the scripts you use. And once again, we'll be putting um, in next week's lab, we'll be putting your your games up on the web for um, for us to actually be able to play them. Um, your your storyboards sh should also be handed in this week um, or Monday for those people who who have tuned on Monday. So, but yes, you should be handing in your your storyboards as well. Um, is there anything else administrative we need to cover? Okay, cool. Um, so I believe last time we were here, we were talking about we we'd done a magical thing. We'd managed to write words on the screen. Um, I know that's very exciting. I, I was truly excited to be able to put the word score up there and actually be able to read it, which is thrilling. Um, but we probably want to do something a bit more interesting than that. Um, so we were looking at we have a scorekeeper object which is keeping track of our score when we want to put it up on the screen. And in fact, let's try and put it up in a more interesting font than that as well. So if you remember the, well, let's stop actually, st stop the game because that's making things tricky. If you remember, we had um, an issue where the font was originally coming out white on white, that's because the default for fonts in um, in Unity is white, expecting you to have a dark coloured background. Um, so we had to add a, a GUI skin which gives us the details, the formatting details for our font. And we uh, created, we created down here in our project um, this GUI skin object, whoops not that, this here, the GUI skin object, which um, if we look at it in the inspector, here it is in the inspector, um, has lots of different details for all the different GUI objects that we could encounter. So um, there's boxes, buttons, toggles and so forth. So text is, we, we put on the screen using a label and so this is all the, all the details for um, for doing a label and there are lots of different kinds of um, features so if you have this is a normal the normal way it's rendered there's also what color do you render it when you're hovering over it what color do you render it when it's active or focused or etc 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 and most of the time you won't ca care about some of those but um, and you can change it's change various other formatting things about the margins and the padding um, they're not really relevant to what we want to do one of the important things though is we can change the font um, which is worth doing because that font's rather boring. So let's, um, I happen to, um, let's go and import a more interesting font into the scene. So if we go uh, assets, import new asset. Now I happen to have in my home directory, I think, I think um, in here library fonts, there it is. Uh, I happen to have a couple of fonts that I've downloaded off the internet. I rather like this font, um, it looks kind of good, so let's import that font. And so just by, by, um, just by going import, import new asset, we can, like we can import models that we downloaded, we can also import fonts that we've downloaded off the web or fonts that we have um, installed in our system um, in the same way. So now that that font is installed as part of our project, we can use that font in our GUI skin by just grabbing the font and sticking it in here where it asks for what font we want. Now hopefully when we uh, run this, there our score is now presented in a fancier font. Um, now one of the more frustrating things about Unity is that there's res when you import a font you have to specify exactly what size you want to import it as. 
So you can't just import a font once and then use it in different sizes in different places in your, in your GUI. You have to import it with a specific size every time. And so when you come here, you can see that we've imported this one with, with font size 16. If we wanted to change that to something bigger, say actually like 48, um, then we have to now apply and it'll reload that font and now that font is, is size 48, I'm hoping. And so now if we uh, run our game there, it is much bigger and far too big because it doesn't actually fit within the box that we specified. But that'll be good. We'll fix that box up. So if we go back to the scorekeeper, remember the scorekeeper had this rectangle. Again, I'll zoom in on that. The scorekeeper had this rectangle which specified where, um, where on the screen we wanted to display the score. And we said just 0, 0, which is the top left corner. But it also has a width and height. The width and height is how big is the, the rectangle in which we're writing this information. And because the word score in our, now that we've made the font bigger, is more than 100 pixels wide, it's, um, it's getting cropped. And so we can't see the whole thing. And so when we come, when we come here, so this is, more, this is a, a little 100 pixel by 100 pixel box. It tries to write the word score in there. It gets to the side and actually wraps around and tries to write the E down here but that goes below the bottom of the box and so the box is, um, and so it's all cropped. So we need to make that a bit bigger. Um, we can make that considerably larger. Let's just make it 500. Um, if you're do designing this properly, you'd actually spend some time working out what the correct values are for this. Um, but I'm just going to uh, pick values that work for the time being. Um, obviously, a real GUI design is um, a whole bunch more, <coughs> sorry, a whole bunch more complicated than this. I'm showing you how to actually put stuff on the screen, but to make it look right, well, that's a whole discipline in itself. If you want to do that, we have a, we have a third year subject on human computer interaction, which goes into a lot of that sort of design issues. Um, but I'm not here to teach you that. Um, so we're putting stuff on the screen. That's all I really care about, and it's working. So, but we've only so far got the word score, which is kind of boring. So let's go back to our scorekeeper and let's print something more interesting here. Now what we want to do is, is print the value of this score variable because this is the variable in which we're keeping track of the player's score. So rather than, t we remove this, oops, I always do that. Oh, stop that. Yes, I should stretch, but I'm not going to. Quick. Um, so rather than print out the word score, what we want to do is print the score variable. Um, now the problem when we do that is if we come down here, Unity gives us an error, and the error says no appropriate version of, of Unity Engine GUI label for argument rect comma int. So what that means is that the GUI, dot, the label method on GUI expects a rectangle and a string. And at the moment, we're putting in a rectangle and an int. Um, and so it can't find a version of that method which, will ha which has an int here. Um, so what we need to do is convert this int into a string. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable score string. Um, and that that's going to be a string. Is that me? No. Oops. And we're going to print out the score string. And now somehow we want to set this score string to be a string version of the number that we have in. So I've talked a little bit about strings before as saying the way we represent text. Uh, I've been throwing around these, these pieces of text in inverted commas um, and they're and using them as strings in our code. Um, this is probably the first time we've explicitly had a string variable before. So, so a string variable is just like any other variable. We can, uh, we can declare it by, by, by the, in the usual manner saying it's a string. We could also just, we could also leave the type out and just say is equal to score and that creates a new string variable with the text string, with the text score in it. And we could use that, and that would do exactly the same thing as we just did. In fact, if we go back and run that, 
hopefully the error will go away, the error goes away, that's good. Don't know what that other error is, let's hope that's nothing important. Um, and now if we play that, again it writes the word score up there, okay? So it looks, so the, ver the word score is stored in the score string variable and then, we're, and then we're passing that as our label and so we're, we're doing the same thing as before. Um, what we can do, converting an int um, into, a, into a string is um, there isn't really a, a neat way of doing it. The best way of doing it here is to do is actually by, well first of all I'll show you, show you one other thing and then I'll, then I'll do that. So if we do score plus 100, right? So this, <coughs> my voice is going, if um, when we, we can use the plus operator on strings as well as on, um, as well as on numbers. But when it's used on a string, it means something different. Um, if, we, if we use to score plus 100, this means take this string and concatenate this string onto the end of it. So join these two strings together. Um, so in, so in um, if these were ints, this would be you know, adi addition. But in strings, it's, it's joining. Um, and so if we join score and 100, um, we'll now see when we run that, Oops, wrong one. Zoom out. There we go. When we run that, it writes score 100. And the thing to note is there's no space in between. Um, it, it takes those two strings and just joins them head to tail. Um, and so what we get from, from joining score and 100 is score 100 as one single string. Um, so if we want to have a space in there, we have to explicitly say there's a space and well, actually, not, let's not put it there. Let's just, for the sake of it, put a space there. All right, and now if we do that, there's a space in between. All right. And we can put as many spaces in there as we want. Um, and that is all part, all those spaces are now part of that string. And you see it spreads things further out. So it prints all those spaces. Um, now what we want to do is not print the string 100 every time but print the actual score that we have. Now the nice thing, we want to print the value of the score variable. Now the nice thing here is JavaScript, if we concatenate a string with something that isn't a string, JavaScript will automatically try to convert this into a string and it'll try to find some way of representing this variable as a string. Now if this, if this variable is a number, it'll just turn that, that number into a string. And so this, if this was zero, this will be the string zero. If this was 100, it'll be the string, it'll turn into the string 100. So we don't have to worry about doing some, having to convert it. JavaScript will automatically convert this into a string when it's being concatenated to another string. Um, and so if we do that, There we go, score zero. So, and hopefully, when we actually play the game, yeah, because every time it updates, it, uh, it prints the score, and so now our score is being nicely printed on the screen. And we'll die. Um, it's not easy, it is tricky. So, and remember, again, we have to have the space there, otherwise it's not gonna do it. But we actually don't really want the word score there. Um, it's not serving any real purpose in our game. So what we can do, um, we can't just do this, right? That, that is an error, trying to say that in some languages, uh, some languages that are smart enough to do an automatic conversion between the two here, but this in, in JavaScript that causes an error because it doesn't automatically convert, it doesn't automatically convert uh, the int into a string. Um, in fact, at the moment that, that will just define score string as an int as well. It'll cause an error if we say that this is a string so if we say, if we explicitly say that score string is a string and we're trying to assign it a value which is not a string, that causes an error because this is an int, this is a string, they don't match and so, so we can't do that. The way to convert a, um, an int into a string without adding anything extra to it is just to concatenate it to the empty string. So if we put two double quotes with nothing in between, then that's a string that has nothing in it. Um, and so, and that's still a string that we can pass around. That's a valid value for our string. Um, 
It's just a string of zero length. Um, and um, to computer scientists, empty things are still things. So you can still have, you can have an empty array, of, an array with nothing in it. You can have a string with nothing in it. You can have an object with, uh, you can have the null object which is nothing. And so the empty string is an example of that kind of thing. This is a string that has no text in it at all, but it's still a string. If we take that empty string and, and, and join the score onto the end of it, then what we get is just the score. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing more in there. So this is a, the easiest way in JavaScript to create, convert an int into a string, is to concatenate that string with the empty string. No, concatenate that int with the empty string. And now if we go and look at our game, there we go. We've got our, we've got our score up there and we don't have anything preceding it because we don't need anything. All right, so we have this, have that. Whoops, and we just go, and we've died. Never mind. Um, so if I go back to, just to make that clear, do, do, I'm going to skip down, skip down. No, not that. To where are we? Down here. Here we go. Strings. There we go. So, so like I said, strings are a data type used for representing text, and uh, and strings are usually represented with double quotes around them. So. Um, Anything that goes inside the double quotes is the value of the string. The, so the, the, the double quotes are just a marker. Um, everything, it's the, the values that are inside the quotes that are, that are what's, inside, what's in the string. Um, we can declare them like this. We can also declare them with a, with a type if we want. It's capital S string. Um, I think there's also, a, there seems to also be a lowercase s string, but I'm not quite sure what, what the, whether that actually works or not. Capital S string is the one we want. Um, so if we were declaring a field on our, on our thing and we didn't want on an object and we didn't want to be explicit about what the value was, we could just declare it as a capital S string and, um, and have the user fill in or have the, fill in the value in the editor. Anyway, so, um, so we can assign it any value. We can also particularly have the empty value which is two double quotes with nothing inside. Um, now, one, the important thing to remember about strings is that the, the string 30 is not the same as the number 30. Um, they are completely different to the computer. And in fact, internally, they are, they're represented quite differently. Um, this is a string of characters 3, 0, whereas this is the actual number 30. Um, so you can't, they are, you can convert between them, but you can't actually treat them as the same thing. And in particular, um, concatenation, which I just showed you, um, joining, we can join together two strings to make a third string. And so if we have the strings hello and Malcolm, we can join them together using the plus operator, and this gives us the string hello Malcolm. And there's no space in between unless we, there's explicitly a space in one of our strings. Um, otherwise it just joins them head to head. Now the thing to remember is that because these strings and ints are different, 20 plus 7 when they're strings will give us 207. 20 plus 7 when they're ints will give us 27, right? Um, and, in, and in addition, um, if we actually edit that, I should actually show also that if we add, if we take the string 20 and add, add the integer 7, we'll again get 207, right? Um, so what happens here is this integer is automatically converted into a string and then the concatenation takes place. So um, it'll always upgrade from, if, you're, if these two things uh, are mixed, it'll always upgrade to a string rather than to an int. So you can't take a string, a, a number in a string and treat it as a number. It isn't a number anymore, it's text. Um, and it's completely different to the computer. Um, so, like I said before, we can convert numbers into strings um, by this automatic by concatenation with another string. Um, it'll just automatically happen. And by concatenation with the empty string, we get the string that has uh, it's just the just the value, no, just the string representation of the number. Um, with no extra padding. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it. 
there isn't any easy way to convert a, a string into an int. Um, it's possible, um, but the, it, I actually don't know whether there's anything in Unity which will do it. Um, in most other programming languages, there are functions to go in both directions. So if you had a string, um, the string 100, and wanted to work out what it was and it's an integer, um, there'd, be a, there'd be a function to do it. There might be a function in Unity. I haven't seen it anywhere in the API. Maybe if you go exploring in the API, you'll be able to find a function that does it. Uh, but you certainly can't do this. You can't assign a string value into an int variable. Um, that will just cause an error in Unity because these because this is an int, this is a string. They don't match, so so that's not allowed. Um, the other thing we'll encounter in strings is sometimes we want there are special characters that represent like the uh, the, the new line at an end of a line or a tab, um, and sometimes and to in order to put these in there, if we if we actually started to do a string and then put a new line in the middle of our string, like actually press new line at the middle of the string and then try to continue it, we cause an error because JavaScript doesn't like us breaking in the middle of a string. So what we have a special escape code, it's called, to represent a new line. If we put a backslash and then an n, then, then uh, JavaScript will convert that into a new line. And so if we print out that string, it'll print it on two lines. Um, if we have a backslash and a t, uh, then it'll print a tab. Um, now this means that the backslash, backslash itself is a special character and so in order to print a, back, a backslash we have to put backslash backslash um, because just one backslash on its, end, on its own will treat the next character as if it was an escape code. So in order to get a backslash in our in very rare occasions when we want to actually display this character we have to do the double backslash. And so when we printed that out it would print as a single slash. And also, because quotes, because double quotes are used to represent strings, um, if we put a double, if we put a double quote within our string, um, it'll JavaScript will think that we're ending, <coughs> will think that we're ending the string, um, and so, <coughs> excuse me, um, it'll mess things up. I really do need that drink. Um, <coughs> so, in order to put back, to put quotes within our string and tell JavaScript, no, we're not stopping the string now. This is actually a character that we want to use in the string. We again have to escape that by putting a backslash before it and then the double quotes. Um, so if you're ever trying to print out uh, a string that contains double quotes, you'll need to use this representation in order to do that. Mm, that's a bit better. All right, so getting back to what we were doing. <coughs> so we have... Um, so that's nice. We have our, um, our score being displayed on the, on the screen <coughs> as, we, uh, as it updates. Um, so the next step, what were we going to do next? Oh, I was going to add a high score list. Um, so let's do that. How are we going on time? Good, plenty of time. So let's, um, let me see where we were up to. If we had ball move, here we go. Okay. So, at the end of the game, I want to display, we're going to put a game over message and then, um, and then display a high score list. So the end of the game happens when, happens here in, we recognize it happens here in ball move. When we hit the bottom wall, the game's over. We've only got one life in this game. So um, we just, we destroyed the ball. What we're going to do is tell the, I'm going to put a, a game over method on the scorekeeper which tells the scorekeeper that the game's finished and then the scorekeeper will put up a, a message and the list of high scores. Um, so in order to do this we need the ball to have some reference to the scorekeeper. So what I'm going to do is we've already got a scorekeeper variable there. Um, the problem is we don't actually have a value for that. Actually no we should have a value for that, that's fine. So if we come over to our um, ball, where's the ball? It's attached to the paddle. There it is. Um, so we have, so we need here to refer to the scorekeeper. So we can just, there it is, the scorekeeper. So now the ball knows about the scorekeeper. Now we have to write that, um, that method on the scorekeeper. So if we come back to our scorekeeper, we need to have a function here that does, that does whatever is necessary to do when the, when the game's over. So we're going to write a game over function here. So now, 
when the ball hits the bottom wall, it'll call this function, uh, and this function will do whatever is appropriate to do. Now, what do we? The first thing we probably want to do is to display a um, the the string game over on the screen, right? That would be the normal thing to do. Now, there's a tricky thing here in that all the all the all this GUI display happens in this on GUI method, right? So we can't just come here into game over and print, print on the screen. Um, what we've got to do is in game over record the fact that the game is finished. Then when the GUI, func the GUI event happens, we'll print game over at that time. So, the, uh, so JavaScript has, or Unity script particularly, has this event based programming model. And um, so what we need to do is, is rather than in this function print the message, what this function has to do is record the, uh, record the idea that the game is over, then later on when the GUI event happens, the GUI event will show, will show that information. So what we're going to do is add a, um, add a game over boolean, uh, we don't really need to say that, and it's initially false because the game is not initially over, but when the game is over, it's going to go to true. Right. So now we know that the game is finished. Um, given that that's happened, what we can now do is have in our GUI script, we can display that the game is finished. So if the game is over, then GUI.label uh, game over rectangle, wherever that's going to be, which we'll just define in a minute, game over. Okay. And we need to have a new game over rectangle, which is going to be one of these. Actually, let's put, let's put that up there. There we go. And call this game over rectangle. There we go. And I'll just, that looks a bit prettier. There we go. Um, so now we're going to, that should work. And now when we go to our, our, back here to our scorekeeper, we have another rectangle here to, so we have the game over field, which is initially false, which is what we want. And we don't have that because I have got an error in my code. Unknown game over rect, game, oh, gave over rect, game over rect, save. There's a game over rectangle, we'll put this. Um, now what would be nice would be to put this in the middle of the screen. Um, like I said before, we don't initially know how big the screen is, but what we can do is actually compute the size of the, uh, compute where the middle of the screen would be. So uh, when we start up, we'll actually set a value for that. Um, so let's say game over rect dot x. And I showed you last week, we can say camera.main tells us what the main camera in the scene is. And then the pixel width tells us how wide the screen is in pixels. If we divide that by two, we've got the middle of the screen. And if we subtract from that the width of the game rover rectangle divided by two, now we've moved back. I really should bring... No. Uh. No, no talk. Now, no, oh, I have to hand wave for that one. So we start, we've got a box this big, we want to put it in the middle of the screen, but we want to put the center of the box in the middle of the screen. So we find the middle point of the screen, we take half the width of the box, and we move back by that half width. Somebody keeps pranking me. It's really annoying. Oh, never mind. Um, yeah, and we move back by half of that width, and that's the, that's the top left, the top, well, the left-hand side of the box will go there. Um, you can work that out at home if you did not follow that, my hand wavy. Anyway, I'm going to leave that, I'm going to not calculate the rest, I'm just going to calculate that one. I'm going to put this at 100, and put this, the width, say, to be 200, and the height to be, say, uh, 80. Sounds about right. And see whether that works. So we're going to die, and so it puts it in the right spot, but it's not wide enough. So 
Um, let's try to make that a bit wider. 400, I'm assuming that's the problem. And again, let's die. There it is. And it's not in the middle of the screen, so I don't know what I did wrong. Hmm, what did I do wrong? Oh, I think I know. Hmm, let's see. Probably. Uh, probably what I've done wrong is this. What it's doing is putting. Yeah, maybe. Um, what it's doing is drawing a box. It's drawing a box of size 300. I've got it set to 300 at the moment as the width. So there's a box of size 300. That's probably a bit longer than that string. So if we could draw, draw the whole box, it would probably come to there. And that box is centered on the screen. But that doesn't mean the text is centered on the screen. So that's slightly annoying. Um, Actually, I think we can fix that. If we go to the GUI skin, we might even be able to say alignment. Here we go. Alignment, upper centre. There we go. See, fixed. So now the box is in the middle of the screen and the text is in the middle of the box and so it prints it in the right place. Hey, oh, now it's printing the score in the middle of its box as well, which is wrong. Um, well, you know, can't have everything. So if we go back to there, what was that upper centre that's good? If we go back to wherever the score box was, that was on the scorekeeper. Let's print the score rectangle, not quite that wide. 200. Yep, well that'll do. Um, so ideally we probably need a different uh, GUI skin for this than for this. Because at the moment they're being rendered with exactly the same font and the same layout values. Um, but we probably want this one centered and this one right justified or left justified. I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing that. Okay, so we've got our game over message happening. That's nice. Um, now what we want to do is actually keep a list of high scores. So I'm going to put an array. I'm going to have, not there, I'm going to have it here. The high scores and it's going to be an int array. And I'm going to just correct that. Okay, so now we have on our, we have here, we have our high scores array. And initially it's, it's empty, but I'm going to make it an array of five things. Actually, let's do that over in the code over there. It's probably too late, but let's try it anyway. Let's make this an array of, we're only going to keep five high scores because I can't print more than that on the screen. And unfortunately, because, you, because I modified this before I changed the code, it didn't remember it. But anyway, so we have an ar array of, uh, that's not the right way of doing that anyway. Oh, sorry, I stuffed that up. Equals new int 5. That's how we create an array, right? So if we, um, sorry, there are, let me go back and show you what I just did in different ways. So if we, if we remove that, disappear. There we go. It's gone from there. If we just say, um, if we just tell the type, tell Unity the type of this is an array of ints. So this, the colon means it's a type, type declaration. The int, it's an int, but it's a, the square brackets means it's an array of ints. Then if we come over to uh, the editor, we'll see that it creates a, it creates that array. Zoom in. It creates that array and it initially has, get out of there, has size zero. Um, so, and I can change that to whatever I want. But let's not do that instead. Let's go back over here and if we, you know, if we remove that so that Unity forgets about it, go away. And now if we put it back but now say is equal to new int five, that actually initializes the value. So rather than just declaring it, we're actually giving it a value, um, and that's, an that's a new array of integers, and there are going to be five things in that array. And now if we go back here, it's created, that, it's created that array of five integers for us. Now we can still change that value if we wanted to and, and make it an array, a larger or smaller array, but this is a way of giving it a default size. Um, so it's a default thing to fi um, five things in that array. Okay, 
So let's, let's actually put some default high scores in here because um, I'm not going to play the game enough times to actually fill this out properly. So I'm just going to put a couple of values in there. There we go. Uh, Fifty. Okay. Fifty. Done. All right. So let's imagine that it had been played several times and those are the high scores. Now what we want to do is, well, let's first of all display those high scores. So um, what we can do here is say GUI, uh, we'll do, well now what we'll do is uh, this, we'll create a, uh, a variable high scores, uh, well actually high scores string which is going to be um, a string. Actually let's, let's initial, just initialize it to the empty string. So we have a, this is, we're going to be displaying, we're going to be creating another label GUI dot label dot high GUI dot label high score string high score rect sorry high scores rect comma high scores string okay so and we need another rectangle for that so let's put that up here uh, hey, do 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 high scores rect and we'll also put that in the middle of the screen so we'll do the same thing we had there high scores rect and over here change this oops not that much high scores rect so now we again have another rectangle over here. We'll again say the same sort of thing as we did. We'll put it a bit lower than the than the game over message. So we'll put it at 200. We'll make it about the same width, 300, and we'll make it considerably larger. We'll make it 500 high because we can have several lines in there. Now at the moment that'll do nothing. Uh, in fact, the no, it won't even work because I have a bug. High, where have I misspelled high scores? There we are. High scores wrecked. So that's better. So if we go back, play again. Okay, so that we get our game over. There's nothing shown because there are no the high scores string is empty, right? So there's an there's an empty high scores box there that you can't see. Lovely. Um, that's not really useful. What we want to now do is put some values in that string. We're going to use a loop to construct that string from the values in our array. So for variable i equals zero, i is less than, let me uh, scroll that up a little bit, put this, just, so you can see, i scores dot length, i plus plus. Right. So this is a very common kind of uh, arrangement, use of a for loop. Um, we have a variable which is going to be an index into our array. We start that variable at zero, which is the first thing in the array, and we're going to go up until we reach, reach, the, length, reach the length of the array. Now, remember our objects in our array, if the array is length five, then our objects are going to be labeled zero, one, two, three, four. So this is going to go to zero, one, two, three, four. Then when it gets to five, which is equal to the length of the array, it's going to stop. And so this is a very, very common, th uh, common programming structure. Um, you use arrays a lot in programs and you will often want to iterate over the array and do something on every element of the array. So all we're going to do is take our high scores string and we're going to concatenate onto the end of that um, the high score of whatever, whatever the index in high score we've got and we're also going to concatenate one of those new line characters so that this is going to have one score on each line. Um, so it's going to, the first score will be written up a thousand and then there'll be a new line and then the next score and the, and notice also that the concatenation operator can have the plus equals version like you can use with ints. It's just a shorthand, it's a shorter way of saying high score string equals high score string plus. Um, so we could, we could have written that but you know that's kind of unwieldy so we just use the plus equals operator and I'm hoping that the and I've missed something because that's not high score, that's high scores. 
It's one of those interesting questions. Do you name your variable, your, your array variables in the plural or in the singular? Because um, the array represents all of the high scores, but often you'll be referring to high score one, high score two, and so you kind of want to name them in the singular. I really don't know what is best, but anyway. Um, I always get to, always mess it up and get it in the wrong way. Okay, so let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go. So there's our list of high scores. All right, now that's boring because it doesn't actually add our score to the list. So now this, here comes the interesting bit. What we want to do now is add the score that we've just um, add the score that we've just got to the list of high scores. So, but we've got to work out where in the list it fits, uh, or if it fits on the list at all, right? So what we're going to do is try to first of all work out where the uh, where the the uh, thing belongs. So what we're going to have is a variable rank. Uh, actually, well, let's do it like this. We're going to have to do a for loop because we're going to look at each. What we're going to do is go down the list of high scores and look at each one in turn and work out whether we're in this is the right place to put it. So we're going to have a variable rank. We're going to start from zero um, and we're going to work up to the end of the list. So rank is less than high scores dot length. So again, one of those kind of iterate through the whole list operations. And now what we're going to say is if our current score is greater than the high score at the rank, high scores rank, then this is where we want to put the score, right? Because we keep going down the list. So if we had the score 500, if the list was 1,000, 600, 400, then we keep going down and say, okay, is five, well actually, I'm going to show you this on a slide, but it's easier to see on a slide than uh, me hand waving, so let's get to there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, this is a new command, break. Um, break is the command that we use to stop a, uh, to stop a loop prematurely. Um, so what will this will do is we'll search down the, link, the list and look at the first element and say no, that element is too small, go, go down the list. But as soon as it finds the right place to put the score, it will it'll run this break which will skip out of the loop. So let me show you what, that, what executing that code looks like. It, I've got the demo in here. Do to do, I can't remember where it starts. There we are. We'll get onto buttons later. Okay. So what the, there's that same code, I abbreviated high scores to HS just to save space on the screen. Um, and we've got this situation where we've already got these five scores and our new score is 500. So we need, we're, creating, we're trying to find the rank, the, ver, the right variable value for rank to, uh, for the spot to slot it into the list. So what we do, we start with rank zero. We, uh, first of all, like any for loop, we check that we're not, we haven't reached the end of the list and we haven't. And so now we check, is the score, uh, is our current score greater than the score at, at position zero? And no, 500 is not greater than 1,000, so that's not the right place in the list to put the score. So now we go back, we add one to rank, we again check that we haven't gone to the end of the list, and then we look again and we say, is 500 greater than 600? No, it's not. So we go back, we add one to rank, we, um, we check again whether we've finished the list, we haven't finished the list. We now say, is 500 greater than 400? Yes, 500 is greater than 400, so we hit this break statement. And what happens here is that we automatically quit out to the end of the, uh, the, end of the loop. So even though there are more things on our list and we could keep going round and round, um, the break statement is a way of getting out of the list, the loop early. So the break statement can be used to prematurely quit a for or while loop, so either kind. And generally it looks like this. We have some sort of, con uh, we have a standard loop where we're looping around on some condition or we're doing a standard for loop. Um, but we have it in there a test and the test says if, the, if it's now time to exit, then we just break and execution continues from the, end of the, uh, from the end of the loop. So this is a way to get out of a loop early. Um, now, breaks should be used sparingly. Um, normally, it's best to design your loop properly so that your loop naturally finishes when, you're, when it's time to finish. 
Um, but sometimes you, you'll have some special conditions where you want to break out in the middle of a loop. And so one of these break, it uh, might, might be useful. If you have too many breaks in your code, it makes it really hard to follow what your code's going to do. Um, so generally, they're considered uh, a bad idea, unless, except in special circumstances. Um, so there are some cases, so don't use it unless you really have to. The idea is normally to design the conditions of your loop in order to, to make them automatically finish when they're supposed to. All right. This is the next bit of code that I was going to write, but we haven't really got time for me to type it into Unity, so I'm just going to show. Once we've got the rank, so we've now said that the rank is 2, so we want to put our score in here. But the thing is, if we just stuck the score into place 2, then this would be 1,600, 500, 300, and 100, which is wrong, right? We actually, what we want to do is move these scores down. So what we've got here is a loop which moves the, the lower scores down, and then after we've finished that loop, then we stick the score in at the place we want. So let me show you what that looks like. What we're going to do is start at the bottom of the loop and work up. And each, each step we're going to copy down and copy down and copy down until we get to the point where we, don't, where we want to insert our new score. So this is another for loop, but in this case we're actually starting at the bottom and we're going up and we're subtracting every time. So this is a backward, a for loop that's going backwards. Um, so we start at, at 4 and we, and we move the value at 3 at 4 minus 1 to the value at 4. And so the value 300 is copied into here. So we then go back and subtract 1 from i and now i is, I is, pointing, I is 3 so we're looking at this entry and we check, is that, is that greater than the rank? Oh, oops. Yeah, that's right. Is that greater than the rank? Yes, 3 is greater than 2. That's fine. And so, once again, we copy the value at... The value at 3 is equal to the value at 2. So the value at 3 is equal to the value at 3 minus 1. So we're copying 400 into, into position 3. Now we go around again. Now I is, whoops, that's the wrong thing. This is meant to be, we're now doing the I minus minus. So I is now set to the value of two. And if we test whether or not we're still greater than the rank, we're not greater than the rank, because two isn't greater than two. So we've done everything we want to do. So what we've been trying to do is all the values below the place where we're going to stick the, the new score, we're going to shuffle them down. And the bottom one just get, the bottom value just got lost because we just copied over it. So now we've got, we've moved all these scores down and we're now in a position to stick our new high score in the right position. Um, now what we actually have to do here is check that the rank that we, uh, the rank of the, the score is actually on the, is on the list, right? If I had a high score which was, uh, well if I, I had a score which was uh, greater than the last, well, so if the last value here was 100, if I had a score that was less than 100, then, uh, then the rank would actually be beyond the end of the list. Um, so we need to check that the rank is not beyond the end of the list because we can't assign stuff beyond five in this list, uh, beyond four in this list. So if the rank is, as long as the rank is less than the length of the list, then we can um, go ahead, which is, it is in this case, and so we can go ahead and stick it into there. Now, I haven't got time to go through it, but if you, uh, you should do, try and do this, go through this code again at home to see what happens if the, uh, if the sco player's score is not going to fit on the list. So if the player's score is, if we repeated this another time and we got a score of 100, um, you should go through the code and see what it does when the score is not going to go onto the high score list. What it'll do is first of all, when determining the rank, it'll go no, 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 and we'll end up with rank 5. And then when we come through this loop, we'll start here with, va with the value 4, We'll check whether that value is greater than, than the rank. The rank is also, the rank is 5, so that's going to, this loop's going to quit immediately, and then this, this if statement is not going to be true, and so it's going to do nothing at all. Um, but you should go, th go through that code yourself and make sure that that's, that's right. Um, don't take it from me. Um, because I get my code wrong all the time, if you've noticed. Um, but that's sort of, 
So this is a kind of a bit more, bit more complicated in terms of array operations than probably what you've seen before. Um, and uh, this is useful in order to, um, to manipulate arrays and move elements around in arrays. And if you remember back to our first lab when you were sorting packs of cards and finding the minimum of a deck of cards, um, this was the kind. This is the way that we would This is the kind of way we would represent that in um, in JavaScript. Now we're not quite. Uh, so we're actually doing a sorting operation here. Every time we had a new high score, we're adding it into this list in order. And so the kind of thing that you said when you were sorting a card, um, if you said we had a deck of cards that are already sorted and we have one more card that we have to put in there, you worked out a way of doing that. This is what that looks like in JavaScript. Um, so. Uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. This is the kind of um, there you do a lot of this kind of programming when you are, when you're doing this sort of thing for real. You're often often dealing with collections of things and you want to keep them in order in some fashion. And so you you use a for loop to iterate over everything in the in the list and examine each thing in turn. I think we're just about out of time. Yes, indeed we are. Um, I'll see if I've got a version of the, high, the scorekeeper which includes that. I have actually, I pr have one that I prepared before the show as they like to say. Um, so if we change this to scorekeeper new and call this one scorekeeper, just a bit of a cheat, and come over here and remove that and add this one. And hopefully this will work. On the ball, we need a scorekeeper there. We need to set that value again. Uh, let's see if this works. So now, oh, there's an error in that. Oh, look at, oh, cool. Aha, there's an error in that because I didn't actually check. Haha, <laughs> see there's a, anyway. I didn't, in the, in the code that I had in the, uh, in the slides, I actually checked whether this rank was on the list. Um, in this code, I didn't check whether the rank was on the list. And so I just tried to put, I got a, a score which was below the end of the list and I tried to put it on the, on the, in the fifth or sixth place on the list and so it died. Um, and so I should actually include here what I had in the, the other thing, which is if I is less than high scores, I scores dot length and now that should probably work. Um, this comes down to um, the uh, if you remember back to the early slides I said that the uh, the six phases of programming uh, or seven phases of programming if we include documentation um, around number five was testing um, it's very important to test your code in all the kind of situations that you're going to encounter. And I obviously tested this code in which I had a high score which was going to be on the list, but I didn't test the code in the case when I had a, high, when I had a score which wasn't going to go on the list, and so I didn't find that mistake. Um, the, uh, it's rigorous testing involves testing every circumstance that might arise in your program. Um, which is kind of tricky in a game because a lot of things can happen in different ways. But you've got to kind of do the thinking through and work out, well, what happens in my code if, I'm in, if, it, if this happens or if that happens and test to make sure your code works in all those circumstances. In the, today's lab, you'll be making a, um, you'll be using array, an array to make a bunch of objects and then you'll be making, then you'll, um, making them all transform at the same time. But you've got to think in your code, what if the user, what if the, the array of objects ha is of zero length, will my code still do the right thing? Or what if the array is of only length one, or if it's of length 100? Um, your code has got to work the right in all, in all cases. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to, have to check that out. All right, thank you for that today. I'll see you, some of you in lab, see some of you next week. Remember your assignment's due this weekend.